Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course that comes in six festive colors. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk all about hardware. We're going to look at what tools we can put in our tool bag, and this comes from our Network Plus N10-004, Section 5.3, where we need to utilize the proper hardware tools. And there's quite a bunch of hardware tools that we could take advantage of when we're working on a network. So let's jump into it. The first one, and this is probably a fundamental one, if you work at all with cabling and you work with the network, is you need a good pair of snips. You need a good pair of these network scissors, these scissors designed for cables. And you can see there's many different kinds. They are designed for wires, and they're not just regular old scissors. You can see they, they are, are very strong in how they're designed. And they also have these little slots in them, these little notches on the outside. It makes it very easy easy to strip some of the out, uh, exterior coating away, this plastic coating from the outside insulator, and so you can get down right into the wire itself. And it's very useful if you're doing a lot of your own cabling, you're doing a lot of your own crimping, you have to get a good pair of snips. Right next to the snips that are in your bag, you're going to need a good cable stripper, especially if you do a lot of cabling. You could probably do one or two cable strips yourself, kind of take that insulation off manually. But if you need to do hundreds and hundreds of these over time, you're going to want a good cable stripper. And this is something that will save you a lot of time. And if you have to do a lot of cabling, it will save your brain. You'll, you'll be much more sane by taking one of these strippers because it takes no time. You put it on uh, your wire and you pull and you're done. It is completely finished or you spin it around. You can see here's one for coax. It spins around the coax and simply takes off the insulating material. Very efficient, very quick in the way it works. And you need to make sure, the only thing you really need to make sure is that you're getting the right kind of cable stripper for the cable you're using. It has these, these very sharp blades that are in it, and they are very specifically sized to be able to take out just the insulation but leave the copper underneath without any type of nicks or cuts. So that's really important. Make sure you've got the right kind of cable stripper for the kind of cable that you'll be using. Well, now that you've stripped your cable off, you need to punch it down into your punch down blocks, don't you? So you're going to need an impact tool to be able to do that. These are tools that are spring loaded. You push them in and they really bang in the wire right into the punching block. Uh, they'll work with 66 blocks. Here's one that you might use on a 66 block or a 110 block with those big connections. There are a lot of different kinds of impact tools, a lot of different styles of impact tools. The one that's really important is that you get a tool that is specific to the type of block you are using. And in, in some cases, it's really more important that you get a punch down tool that's recommended by the people that gave you the punch down blocks. So you may want to go back to, to the block manufacturer and say, what punch down tools do you recommend that will work properly with this kind of block that you've designed? Although they're all supposed to be exactly alike, there are some minor differences between them. So it's nice to go back and make sure you're using the right kind of impact tool so you're not damaging anything on those blocks. Have you ever had to trace back a wire that's running through walls, that goes around a corner, that's on one side of the building to the other? It's almost impossible unless you have something like this, like a toner probe. These are really nice. You have two pieces here, completely separated. One piece you would plug into an outlet or you would connect to some cable. The other piece is a probe that works through induction. So all you have to do is get that probe somewhere near the wire and it will start making a toning noise because that's what this is sending down the line is a tone signal. And so this is designed, it's got a little speaker on it. You can see the speaker so that whenever it finds that wire, you simply have to touch the wire with the end of your probe and it will be very loud. You'll be able to hear it quite nicely. And you'll know that the end of the wire on the other side of the building happens to be this one. And you can label them up. There are many different kinds. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some plug into different kinds of connections and different kinds of cables. Uh, the idea is that you would just have some way to send that tone through the line and some way to hear it on the other end. And it will save you a lot of time if you're trying to trace down where these wires are going. On networks these days, we not only do a lot with our data networks, but we also do a lot with our voice networks. And if you're working a lot in a voice environment with those analog lines, you will probably want to get a butt set or something called a lineman's handset. The name comes from being able to butt in on a call. You can see you've got these clamps that plug right into the wires themselves. And it's really useful if you're in a wiring closet, you're trying to track down some problems with getting a telephone to work properly. You don't have to find a phone and cradle it under your arms and try to use the handset to your hand. 
You simply have this one device that you plug into the wires you're interested in getting a dial tone on and you can make calls through this. You can flash, you can do a lot of things through this view just to make sure you know that the end of that telephone line is getting the signal it needs to be able to do dial tone and everything else that you would do with the telephone. If you're working in networking, you need a multimeter. You must have a multimeter. It is the Swiss Army knife of networking. It does so many different things. It is really focused not only on power, but it helps a lot with the cabling that we do. I can get AC voltages and DC voltages from this. So whether it's coming out of the wall or it's coming out of a power supply in a router, I can see what's going on from a voltage perspective. Maybe you have batteries and you'd like to see if those batteries will work. A multimeter will certainly tell you the voltage on those. This is really useful in networking, which is being able to do continuity tests. Plug in on one side of a cable and see what pin connects on the other side of the cable. That can be very useful if you're trying to reverse engineer the way a cable is wired. And also fuse status. You can tell just by putting our probes on the end of a fuse if that fuse is something that is working or not. And that really helps if you're in a small environment, you don't want to pull the fuse out, you'd like to see what's going on there. A great way to take advantage of the continuity features inside of a multimeter. If you ever have to install a large infrastructure of wiring or even troubleshoot the wiring that's already in place, you'll know that a good cable tester can really help you. Whether it's one of these more advanced cable testers that gives you more information about the way that these different wires are configured, if there are shorts between them, or if it's something very simple that just gives you a, a light feedback on whether these wires are connecting from end to end, all of them have these capabilities that will help you when you start getting into more wired type environments. When you have a lot of different connections that you're trying to do, you may want something that's a little more advanced. A cable certifier is a device that's able to do attenuation testing and near and crosstalk and far and crosstalk and about 20 other different statistics about how well this wiring is configured. And we'll tell you very specifically in a quantitative form with all of these different values, how is the wiring in this particular link? You can do this testing as you're implementing a new environment for wiring. Maybe you're putting in 100 new links. You may want to test all 100 of those and make sure they're ready to go from day one. Or maybe somebody's having a problem. You just need on demand to walk over and do a single test. These cable certifiers can tell you without a doubt whether this wire is going to be good or whether this wire is going to be bad. When you want to go to that top layer of wiring testing, you need something like a TDR or an, or an OTDR. This stands for Time Domain Reflectometer. And an OTDR is the optical version of the TDR, which works with fiber. These are really useful because they're sending signals through the fiber through the fiber and signals through the wire that can estimate cable links. They can tell you how far down the line a splice happens to be. They're that sensitive in understanding what's happening down that length of the cable. I can see impedance information. I can understand signal losses. We really are getting very, very detailed information about what's going back and forth over that wire, all from this really useful handheld system. So it's very mobile and very portable. And if we ever need to be able to move to different areas of the building and see what wires are doing and get an ultimate value that tells you exactly what's going on, this is the tool to use. One critical piece of your infrastructure is got to be power. Power is really what we must have for all of this networking stuff to work. So a really nice tool to have in your arsenal is something like this, a voltage event recorder. This is something that plugs into your power source. Just plug it into the wall, plug it into whatever the rest of your systems are plugging into, and it will start gathering statistics about how good your power is. It tells you what the voltage is over time. I can see transient voltages. I can see if you ever get a flickered type voltage, if there are any harmonics on the line. There's a lot of really great details I can pull out of this. Now, much of this is very much for the electrical engineer to understand what's going on. But what a simple platform just to be able to plug in and have it start recording what's happening with power. And if you're ever in a situation with a, an older building, maybe a new power system was put in, and you want to be sure that power is working properly, properly, this is exactly the tool you should use. Well, if we're monitoring power and we're in a data center, why not also monitor the rest of the environment? Things like the temperature, understand what's happening with humidity. See if you ever get any flooding in the building. That'd be something you might want to be alarmed on. And devices like this can give you some of that environmental monitoring. This is a nice unit because it also has some wireless capabilities. I just put it in a rack 
and all connect some other devices to it, some other sensors I might have, and it will report back to me via this wireless connection. Send me an email if the temperature gets too hot. Send me a text message if there's any flooding on the floor. So this can give you a heads up, especially environments where you're not there a lot of the time. Everyone goes home on the weekends, or it's just in a part of a building or a different location, a different city, a different state, and you still want to get an idea of how well things are with the environment. It's a great solution to use. We talked a little about protocol analyzers in a previous module, but it's worth mentioning again that this is a great tool to have in your tool bag. With this, we can gather packets. We can see what's going back and forth over your network. And there's a lot of options, both open source and commercial environments. Go ahead and download Wireshark from Wireshark.org. You'll be glad you did because there's a ton of information you can gather from your network. And whether you're using an open source version or a version that you get commercially, this will be one of the most powerful tools that you'll have in your arsenal as a network professional. This is something you cannot do without. And if you're not familiar now with the way these packets are flowing across the network, this is also a great learning tool. This will tell you a lot about the ways that network works. And oftentimes it's looking through packets where you get more questions about what's going on that you can then go answer and learn more about what's going back and forth over your network. Let's review what we've learned from our hardware tools module. What tool could be used to track the wiring from a specific location? We want to see where exactly where this wire goes between point A and point B, and that would be a toner probe. Let's do another question. What tool can determine the length of a wire? There was one that dealt with time and reflection, and it was called a TDR, a time domain reflectometer, or an OTDR, which is the optical version for fiber. And the last question, what device can be used to check the voltage of a connection or even the continuity of a cable? Well, that is your Swiss Army knife of a multimeter. Very useful to have. That is the end of this section 5.3 where we've gone through a lot of different hardware tools. And hopefully you've seen one that you can go out and stick into your hardware tool bag when you're working on your network. If you'd like to go through any of our Network Plus videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.